Hello, and welcome to the Merthyrdale County Borough Council's Neighbourhood Service Side Nervouses. Neighbourhood Services Countryside and Planning Scrutiny on Monday, the 11th of March 2024. Please note that this meeting may be recorded and broadcast via the authorities' internet site. The images and sound recording may also be used for training purposes. Do we have any apologies for absence? None. Do we have any declarations of interest? None. In that case, we move on to item three, and I'll pass you over to Councillor David Hughes, Portfolio Lead for Neighbourhood Services. Thank you, Chair. Um, as uh, we all had the report, it's by diversity and green spaces management. Some report is to inform members of the recent achievements and provide further insight into the challenges facing in relation to biodiversity and green spaces management. To provide a clean understanding of how we are responding to the Environmental Wales Act Section 6 responsibilities through a proactive development and management of the open spaces and designated within the open spaces strategy. Um, the recommendations, Chair, are found in 2.1 for scrutiny to note that the debate of the report and provide a critical friend challenge on the findings to support the implementation of the goals of Mercer Tidville Nature Recovery Plan together with the Mercer Tidville Open Spaces Strategy. Um, where we, if we go down to where we were before 2016, local authority had to consider biodiversity, which had been a more subjective approach to this matter. As a consequence, much habitat may and many species may have declined or be lost. Where we are now, um, after after bringing a paper last year, the Environment the Wales Act came into the force of 2016. It required local authorities to enhance biodiversity, public authorities required by the Welsh Government to repair and publish a plan showing how the Section 6 duty would be fulfilled. The Section 6 plan, the Mercer Nature Recovery Act plan, 2019-2024 document had a dual purpose. Not only did it replace the previous Mercer Biodiversity Action Plan of 2014-2019 document, but also represents a sec uh, Section 6 plan in accordance with the Welsh Government Guidance, Environment of Wales Act 2016, Part 1 Guidance for Section 6, the Biodiversity and Resilience of Econ Ecosystems Duty. Um, where we want to, want to be um, through a series of visits and I like the changes made and the difficulties encountered. Members will be able to personally witness the success of more recent enhancements to the landscape and biodiversity, which will encourage them to enthusiastically support future projects. Such visits would facilitate increased comprehension and assistance. Seasons and habitats will determine which sites are visited and the list of locations being made. Since 2019, grant funding has been secured each year to deliver a, a large projects that have supported open spaces strategy and the local NRAP. Case studies have been made each year and Welsh Government promoted through the various social media avenues. In, it shows that in Appendix 1. And in November 2023, we were awarded the prestigious Pro Landscape Project Award for Community Green Space and the 50,000 Nature Gift Garden in Trodderoo. 
and uh, I think we should all uh, congratulate Jill on that. So well done, Jill. And so uh, at the opening now, um, I'm sure you've got many questions to ask. Thank you, David. Thank you. Um, can I just uh, second David's comment, belatedly say congratulations on winning the Pro Landscape Project Award. I was unaware of this, and I think we should always promote the success of our hardworking teams widely. And on that note, uh, I shall open it up to the committee for questions. Uh, Councillor Colburn, oh, wait a minute. Okay, Coming thank, on. thank you, Chair. Well, following on from that, really, just and looking at Appendix One to see the number of projects that you've completed in the last year is absolutely amazing. You've made a real difference to the to the environment. So I'm really pleased to see that. And is that right? You've still got no core funding. You're still doing this purely on grant funding. And what's the position looking like for grant funding going forward? So grant funding is never guaranteed. As we know, so at the moment we got grant funding till the end of 2025, and then this financial year now I will have to look at a new project and put that into Welsh Government for approval then the year after. So there's no guarantees. Obviously, Welsh Government at the moment are in deficit as well. So come 2025, it's your guess is as good as mine. So given the LNP grant has been going since 2019. <clears throat> Given all the environmental targets of Welsh Government, it's highly likely we'll get it. But obviously, I can't can't foresee that given the financial situation at the moment. But I know because it's hitting a lot, a lot of targets, we're talking the whole of Wales, um, we're seeing more and more emphasis on the environment. So fingers crossed we will get it. OK, and it's the, the team is just you and Matt at the moment, is it? Yes and no. So me, Matt is obviously in planning. I'm in parks yeah. um, and I've just employed somebody through the LNP money because with the LNP money, it's split. You've got capital and you've got revenue and there's two pots of revenue. So we've just been able to employ a new person <laughs> who sits as the LNP officer. So LNP means local nature uh, partnership. So we have a partnership within the council as representative, which Malcolm used to represent as the biodiversity champion um, with lots of different stakeholders to kind of foresee what we're doing as a borough kind of to everyone else and showcase all our kind of projects. So Yayan is here till end of 2025 and hopefully we'll have many then come through the revenue through the local places for nature grants and then I can keep him on them for another year or two. But again, I don't know if Yayan goes, it's just me doing all the implementation work because Matt doesn't do the implementation work. So it is everything on the on that sheet is me on the ground. Well, well, looking at that list and everything you've done over the last year, Jill, I'm amazed you've got time to spend to come to us and visit us this afternoon, to be honest. <laughs> I don't. <'Cause> that's quite <laughs> a list of, of things. I, I was in the park in Bedlam this morning and uh, looking at the, the pond. It's made such a difference. It's absolutely fantastic. It, it's looking now. And um, again, other projects you've done around my borough, have made, my yeah. ward, have made such a difference. So for you, obviously, um, in Nantlinog, that money has come from the Local Places for Nature grant. Um, as the partnership, we only get £10,000. So for me, I'm always looking at pennies into pounds and how I can really support lots of different projects. And again, that pond supports Matt's NRAP because obviously as part of the NRAP, we're looking to increase ponds, wetlands, looking after our kind of blue kind of areas within the borough. Um, and also Bedlin, our council, I was down there two weeks ago. Again, I can't put everything in that appendix. I was down there with Michelle Simmons, um, trying to support the Bedlin, our council as well and how we can improve that area too. So. Things are going on, maybe that, you know, I haven't been able to write down everything to. Well, so there's more than what's on this list. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to some seeing some frogs and tadpoles in the pond there <laughs> in a few weeks' time. They will so, be. Uh, yeah, hopefully. Um, um, sorry, I'll come back in a second. Sorry. I was... <laughs> 
Jude, do you want to come in there? Yeah, thanks. I just wanted to come in. I thought it was uh, useful just to inform um, the committee. Obviously, you know, we are very fortunate from all the funding we've had from Welsh Government, but I think it's important to note that that's not a given that Jill has to put a, a huge amount of work into submitting applications for these grants. You know, that that's a, a huge effort in itself. But not only that, throughout the year, then she has to monitor outcomes and make sure that the money is being spent and, you know, make um, significant returns to Welsh Government to evidence all of it. So it's a piece of work in itself. Don't get me wrong, funding, getting funding is great, but it comes with a lot of work as well. So I think it's worth noting that. It does. So Welsh Government on targets all the time. Sorry, that's gone off now. They want case studies and targets. It's a huge amount of work just to do the paperwork, let alone the implementation. Now, this year it was a bit different because Tom Bramley retired back in October. Every year since we've been doing the local places for nature, we've tried to do not just the capital project for local places for nature, but also the challenge fund. So that's double the work that two people have been able to do. This year when Tom retired, I was just like, I can only concentrate on this part. So an extra pair of hands to deliver these problems, 100% needed. Do I just come in with it and ask the cabinet member if uh, if you think there may be any funding available in the future, core funding for these type of projects? Yeah. I understand the current uh, financial yeah. position, obviously. Yeah, obviously with the current situation, um, at the moment I can't say there's any money in the at the moment, Dave, but uh, obviously if there is, and by the verse, they're a very um, important part of our strategy over the next coming years. So I'm sure uh, Judith and myself will look at it, and if, if we can help Jill in any way, we will be looking at it. Lovely. Thank you very much, David. Uh, Councillor Leighton. Oh, thank you, Chair. Um, I don't know why I'm directing these at, at the moment. There's two questions, but I don't know who's going to answer it. Um, the Dowless Greening College, or what grade to green, I call it in Dowless, Jill. Yeah. Um, yeah, great, fantastic. Hopefully by the summer, I would see it looking really nice. Obviously, there was funding put in place for that. So who will be responsible for the upkeep of that now? It's us. So yeah, it's the problem with all of these grants there is no revenue aspect for maintenance, um, which is always difficult to kind of justify. Um, given our core objectives for the council are waste and biodiversity, again, I've got to look at how can I improve the areas in the borough um, equally to be low maintenance, which I appreciate is a big thing for parks with less staff going on. So I can give you an example there, Trelewis Pond, we did in 2019. Um, I went back there last week to do some new improvements. That's five years of no maintenance. So whenever we delivered these projects, we've always tried to look at how low maintenance can be from planting um, subspecies that we put in there. So yes, Dowless High Street is going to be a little bit contentious because obviously it's a carriageway. And you are going to have people throwing rubbish out of there. And yes, that is going to be on us to do in terms of um, kind of it should be minimum planting because of the species we put in there. In a couple of years time, they'll be big. You won't need to be doing as much weeding, but that will come to me, hopefully, and my team that we can go in there maybe once a year, if that, to kind of uh, look after it. Because um, there is a certain kind of type of grass in there, isn't there, that you've got as a... We've got lots of... I couldn't give you the plants, obviously, at the moment. No, there's that's a certain grass or something, that, I don't know. Doesn't we've got, so we've got lots of different kind of grasses in there because, again, because it's a carriageway, you're going to have them grit in it. So we've had to think of salt-tolerant plants too. Um, I think Tom's obviously the one that wrote, obviously, all yeah. the plant list, which I've got in the office, but... I think there's things like probably like buffalo grass, things like that in there. Um, they're more landscape. Um, we did want trees to go in there to be a bit more avenue, but we couldn't because of the services. Um, 
that's not to say in the future we can't but currently engineers are quite concerned with obviously you know with the kind of drain system there that any leaves go in there and they haven't got the maintenance to do that so we've picked more low maintenance so you're not going to get as much debris going into the water system okay um but it is something that i'm looking at it is on my radar it's like unfortunately because the way the grants are you deliver one grant you bang on to the next one mm. but it is in the back of my mind that i've got to go back there soon because what i'd like to do and what i've always done with all of these sites is each year i use a little bit of the money from the grant to keep improving on these sites to keep adding slowly slowly um whether that's trees that have been snapped we add in Dallas High Street I'd like to kind of put in more planting so like some more bulbs maybe throughout the year so that you've got more colour um and for any that obviously you haven't taken and you know not successful so right. it will be something that I'll keep on top of but in terms of maintenance it could be low maintenance but as with all of these schemes it's our land we're supposed to be maintaining mm -hmm. anyway okay just Oh. If I can just come in on the back of what Jill is saying there, just to say, yeah, I think it's, you know, for me, really, to make sure that other departments are better coordinated to support, to support their effort, yeah, yeah. as Jill said, biodiversity and waste are the priorities. Um, but, you know, if the likes of street cleansing and engineers can, you know, be coordinating and working towards that to help with the maintenance, then obviously Straight. we're going to get a better outcome. Yeah. So that's my and of course, we're available if you need us as well as community groups, you know, feel yes, supported we, as well. No. Um, <laughs> Second question, and this is better way, but I'm just using this particular area as an example. Yeah. yeah. Um, the Ivy Tip and the Pant Hollow is mentioned on page 19 of the Merthyr Tidville Open Space Strategy, uh, which has been provided as a background paper on here. This area is classified as priority open space, but is now regularly being used by off-road vehicles and four by fours, quads, whatever. And this is families, not just these boys out on bikes now. You've got families actually taking their children on their quads and everything. Now, is there anything we can do to stop the off-road vehicles using this area and other priority open spaces areas throughout the borough, maybe by putting up signs or the placement of large boulders? I know this is obviously a very large area. However, if we are aiming to meet these targets, we also got to be seeing... I know you say enforcement is a police issue if, if someone sees it, which is being done. However, is prevention better than cure? And is there a way that we can stop this? Like Edward Street, mm. all that now is lovely because it's all fenced off. The park is there. And then you've got the, the mm. green space area there with all these different plants and pools and everything. Yep. But it's a major issue down on that ground. And I, we don't know what the answer is. You know? Off-roading is a real big problem in the borough anyway. I mean, they're usually doing it on kind of areas that seem to be not used so for me again doing this grant over the years um you know i've looked at areas that are either big because there's a lot of money and i can't spend a million pounds on just a few trees it doesn't work so there's usually engineering involved um off-roading is a big problem but they're doing it because the land's not being used recreationally in a, in a nice kind of warm welcoming way which is about what the open space strategy is all about if somewhere is being used it's got a warm welcome feel and generally you've got your families coming in using it rather than your off-roaders i think for somewhere like either tip again it's been on my radar in the background to maybe use part of the local places for nature grant to change that um it's quite tricky the grant because basically what they're asking is you to get people closer to nature but if there's got a lot of nature on there already then it doesn't classify as an area which i can improve so mm. it's a really it, it's a chicken and egg one that is mm. because you kind of want people to use it in a more recreational welcoming nature-based place so, so, so I was going to say on on 4.1.5, the opportunity side of it is uh, number three says to enhance civic pride and number four, yeah. broadening at the um, definition of play to actively encourage use of the area. And if this is going on in the area, yeah. do you not have people wanting to actively use it as a family or going to the park or going for a picnic or basically just getting involved in 
outdoor activities because they got caught in by Zoom and bus. So, so it's, it is a big issue. As there's a new grant. So I've just had I've done an interview this morning for somebody else with the Shared Prosperity Fund. Um, I'm desperately trying to get people employed through this because there's a, a quite a big pot of money there to improve the open spaces purely for open spaces. Yeah. So where I'm constrained to what I write in the grant for the local places of nature, the shared prosperity one isn't, and that is all about open spaces. So I think there's around about £200,000 that needs to be spent. I might be wrong there, but I think um, from memory that, yes, these places can be put in. But I think, again, as Jude said earlier, it's more about departments coming together, speaking to each other, and like some of the places I would like to do, I don't know um, that, you know, they could be in the LTP. Mm -hmm. They could be used by other kind of organisations that have already spoken to estates. I don't know that until I actually come to that piece of land. But yeah, I, it is nice, that place as well. The incline is lovely. Not the incline, the... the um, uh, I tip yeah, them. it's a lovely area that is. And it's massive. And that's, I think this is the problem as well. It's so vast. I so it's not easy to deal with but if we could prevent them going on there sure the job wouldn't be as difficult you going back every week seeing the same thing being kicked up the grass is a mess plants are pulled up i mean they even driving up high street on the middle yeah uh, green area where you put in you know thank you anyway joe you doing a comment don't no i got nothing to add to that oh well, sorry you can, like, oh am i sorry Mine as well, and my mum too. Ah, you were not going off. You were just be a lot more to say. Yeah. <laughs> um, next then is uh, Councillor Smith, please. So the grants we we apply for is that for the bigger project for one year, or we got a list of projects that we do per year for us to have a look. Chair, right. it's now it used to be one year only, and that was it. So we'd have to put in one big grant so over the years that we've done Trilluis, we've done abacanid school and the riverside walk there we've done obviously prince charles we're currently doing parts on the incline at the moment uh troy de rue we've done and they're the bigger ones and then there's all the small ones this year welsh government have changed it's gone from a one year to a two year grant which is good for us because obviously we've got longer periods of time when we've got a lot more money. One of the things that we always say is it's really hard to deliver a project in one year because Welsh Government, like this year, for instance, they didn't give us the money until I think it was the end of July, August. So I've already lost half a year to start delivering projects. So there's only one big capital one there. And then there's the smaller pots. And again, they've changed it this year. So you've got two small pots. So the £10,000 is for the Merthyr Tidwell Biodiversity Partnership. So that could be anyone from, say, Keep Wales Tidy, uh, NRW, South East Wales Rivers Trust, the Friends of Nantlinog, anyone on that group can ask me, can you, can you give me some money? But it's got to fulfil the NRAP that Matt draws together and does. The other pot of money, which they've changed, is for section section six duties. And within there, there's quite a few kind of points I've got to deliver. Not always achievable, but I generally try and tick every single box. So as of 2025, I don't know. There's the other pot, which is the challenge fund. Um, and that can go up to around about £300,000 again if I put all the work in and it generally takes about six months to write a grant up. So there's a lot of time to just write a grant up and there is only me writing it. <laughs> so we're good, isn't it? It's amazing. <laughs> what, I'm, what I'm chasing is, is a big section is the Ben Cowan Point. Yeah. Right, that's been, you, I've been back for the last 30 odd years, isn't it? Like, yeah. And it seems that we're not getting anywhere fast. Part of the park is a, it's just one big mess. It's a dumping ground. So that, again, that's when. So do you do a list of the beautiful members so we'll look at it in each ward or just for? No, I don't do that. I generally go off the end wrap and I look at the different habitats that need to be uh, addressed and delivered. So that could be anything from 
broadleaf woodlands to rivers to grasslands um it could be species that we look at so that could be you know kind of bats otters badgers anything like that um no i generally go off then so that's the nrap and the open space strategy and we look at those priority habitat those priority areas i should say sorry um that need support and help with obviously making them more welcoming spaces so every single one we put into the local places for nature has been an open space i'm the naturalist i doing something with open spaces anything else because there was something in the red house last Thursday <clears throat> on open spaces and also they were working with the Valley Homes Housing Associations. So is the grant funding there? There's grant funding to support Merthyr Valley Homes because they're on our partnership. Right. Um in terms of the health, did you ask? Yeah. Are you talking like Prince Charles Hospital no, places like that? Oh, there was something in the red that was last I think it was last Thursday. And I think the last um last Party would would talk about um, open spaces and everything else because they reckon that's for mental health and everything else. That's yeah. that's kicking in with it. Yeah. So, so they're talking about. I couldn't make it. I was. Uh, there's a lot of scientific uh, research just to show like open spaces, green spaces improves your health a lot quicker. Um, if you're in the hospital and you can see green space, it obviously improves your health much quicker than if you didn't. Um, we worked obviously with Prince Charles Hospital when we actually delivered on the playing fields there. Um, I'm working with Tegan Arse Nursing Home at the moment, delivering projects there for them. But uh, they're a public service body anyway, so they're supposed to be doing their own work. It's very difficult to try and get them to come to the partnership. Um, we used to have the fire service on our partnership many, many years ago, the police as well. They used to come, but I think since COVID, a lot of that has kind of kind of just gone. Because we did have the um, the Dixie Gardens burning as well. I can't remember the name of the project. And do you remember going all to the yeah. I'm making it open space and bike parks and something like that in that area? Fire service, was it? Fire service, yeah. Healthy hillside. Hillside, aye. But I don't. Know that, it's that, finished. So they got it finished, and because of the heads of the Valley Road, so that oh, area right. was um, again a beautiful, beautiful yeah. kind of habitat. Um, because of the heads of Valley Road, I think it was about half of the site That's went. Right. So Tara Daniels, who was delivering that project, she really struggled, to be honest, to try and deliver that project because it was all about engagement about kind of restoration about looking at how um this fire service and the community can work together so you wouldn't have fire risks near people's homes but yeah it, was, it would have been a fantastic project but obviously the grant for that finished because that was enroll grant um and because half the site is gone, it's not no, much more we can do. They put a kitness word in with the road. Yeah. That's a big change, yeah. But can I also say, I think Councillor Leighton is right. We've got to do something with these motorbikes because they're not only on open spaces, they're on the roundabouts, on the roads. So I don't know how we're going to take it forward because we've got to get the police up and going because mental health is they're frightening people. The motorbikes that come to the road, they're frightening. It, the older generation and it's not nice. I'm just wondering, Beth Jones, I think she does the trails group. I think it'd probably be worth bringing that up in that group because I believe the police service are on that particular trails group. But we, as a council, we've got to do something. It's getting ridiculous. And mm. it's not only more like you've got electric scooters, you've got to, it's a trailer, but that's lemon. When you're on the pavement. So, I don't know how we take it forward, do from here. Oh, no, we, we got to do something. It's very difficult. Again, like, I mean, the only time I've dealt with off roading is probably on triple SIs, especially up by Heel Gerrig. I mean, I know at the moment they're actually cutting farmers' fences down to actually get up there. Because um, I'm trying to get some of those. Some of the kind of farming that is here to get them onto my partnership at the moment because I can get a wider picture of what's going on in the borough. So, yeah, it is a real problem. NRW used to 
compound and obviously take away some of the bikes, but I've not heard anything like that. Oh, thank you, Keith. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Bill. Uh, Philip Starr next, please. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Just just a couple of questions, Jill, about the about the appendix, really, some some more information, really, about some of the uh, the obvious developments that you put here. Can you tell us what a um, bit more information about the new legal agreements with the wildlife trust of Tafech? And is that what Bill was just talking about? No, no. no? Okay. So, so so what what were those new legal agreements actually? Okay, so it's still it's still actually going on at the moment. So basically, the Wildlife Trust um, started looking into kind of area maps and boundaries, and they realised that the leet was actually within their boundary. Right. So we all know the kind of problems with the leet, and it's leaking obviously on the tram roads, and it's being washed away. But within their lease, and I think their lease is from God, 19 something. I can't remember now because they've got a 99 year lease. So, whenever they first took this on, way before my time, mm -hmm. obviously that boundary with Leet was in there. So, the new project manager was like, okay, well, we can't do anything with Leet because if we did that, we as an organization would be bust. There'd be no wildlife yeah. trust. So, they came to us and said, look, can we just change boundaries? So I walked with the manager and our estates department to look at where their boundary they would like to kind of go, which was fine, fine for me. You know, I've got no issues with that. Um, but obviously, because of the legal agreements within the lease, they've had to like look back at everything. So what you've got the Ponson group, which is a new group that have set up because of the Welsh water treatment want to yeah. go on the triple SI. You've got a group of people who've come together, obviously, in uproar about this. Um, and they then decided, well, do you know what? We'll take on the lease. We want we want the triple S side. Right. So obviously there's a lot of to and fro and go in there. Um, I don't know. You don't know who's on that group, you know, as such. Have they got the right expertise to be able to manage a triple SI? Do they, you know, can they do it? So Myself and estates at the moment have looked at um, the management plan. So it's not been all written up. I believe in six weeks' time, the actual management plan will be finalised for the triple SI. But because the other group have taken an interest, there will be no more 99-year lease. It'll only be a 25-year lease. Right. So we are trying to involve the Ponson group to be involved in the actual management tasks. That's going to be quite difficult because... Is loggerheads with the two groups at the moment. Yeah. Um, so there will be some negotiation. I would personally like to try and set up the old Tafekin management committee that we used to have. Um, I believe we used to meet once a year. Yeah, which was, I think, was quite productive. What what happened to that then? Did Again, it, COVID, it just, it just evolved. Felt, okay. So it'd be quite timely really to set that up but nothing's been agreed as such because I'm waiting for the management plan to come in once that comes in myself and Matt will read over all those things agree to what they've got and then the lease will be signed so a little bit early <laughs> okay, thanks. Well, just a couple of other things on on that yeah. list as well give us some information about what the plastic research with cardiff university cardiff is university do you remember there was i can't remember how much it was million pounds being spent down in tap bargoids um when they were trying to desilt the lake down there yeah um and rescape it so at the time cardiff University were doing some research down there to look at the silt coming down from places like Fossafran and some of the farmers that own land on either side and kind of working out. So they started looking at microplastics that were actually coming down into Taft Pargoy Park itself. So once that grant had finished, um, Rachel, who was delivering that project, spoke to Cardiff University and said, you might want to speak to Jill, she might have some money to help you kind of further your research so Cardiff University approached me and said are you able to fund um, our research further so what we decided was yes I could so they've put a probe near Fossafran in some of the tributaries and they're looking at the tiny mi microplastics that are coming down what they want is Merthyr to be a research hub 
for microplastics in the future. Mm. So any PhD students that come through, they've got a paper already at the moment. And then that can be like, you know, the beginning. So it's like a really early research in Merthyr, but going forward, it's for any PhD student coming through, which obviously microplastics are a huge topic mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, Merthyr will be a research hub. That's great, it's good news. Yeah, yeah. Be interesting. And again, they're supposed to be sending me their paper very, very soon. So we're coming to that last year now. Um, I think they're putting things under the microscope at the moment to actually tell me what's going on. So again, I can forward that information on when I get it. So great. And just just one other thing with regard to this list, I like to second what other people have said about the 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 massive wide range of projects and achievements that you've that you've obviously been responsible for. Um, how has these been communicated to the to the general public in the borough? Well, are, they, are they aware? Because because there's a tremendous no. list of things here, and if people aren't aware, they just you know I think you need to be to mm. bang 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 your own drum here. Or yeah. Drum. So again, we used to have a Facebook page, and I believe in the elections, the last elections, for some reason the page went down. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you. And it was a sad loss because we had a lot of followers on there. So it's only in the last month that I've set up the page again. But unfortunately, it's had to go through my own personal Facebook, which, again, is really tricky to kind of set it up. I tried, to, even though it's got my council address. Um, so we're now promoting on our on our biodiversity page of all the projects that we're doing. The new SPF, if I can get this person in, the new SPF engagement officer We'll be able to showcase all this. The new person in Yine at the moment has been fantastic. We're starting to do a new newsletter, which we will send out to our partners just to add more work to, uh, you know, what we do. Um, and we're starting to promote on our page now loads. So if you can look at our biodiversity partnership yep. page and if you can share what we're putting on there, that would be fantastic to get things out. But generally, it's not promoted it hasn't been i've tried for years to kind of push that but because it's just me it's difficult i will send the odd thing through to the contact magazine um through to our comms but they're generally the bigger things like the pro landscape award yeah. Yeah. or where we've done the grass cutting the new machinery to obviously because it's quite a public contentious thing about grass cutting we try and push that a little bit more but no, it's not. It's not promoted what we do enough. It never has been. You know, I, I think that's a that's a detriment of all your achievements as well. Then yeah, you need to be seen. You need to be aware that these things are ongoing and how successful they've been. So anyway, yeah, keep trying. I need a dedicated person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's a, that's for that's for another argument, isn't it? Okay, thank you very much. No thank you, Chair. Jill, can I just ask you there? What what is the title of the media page it's Merthyr Tidville biodiversity partnership and it's got the partnerships logo on there like a dragonfly on there and I've put our pro landscaper you know like the long kind of one I've used that image as our main one because that's uh, showcasing what it looks like in spring it's beautiful that's Facebook. So again, our new officer, Yayan, um, he's hopefully going to set up a new Instagram page for us. Apparently, he's social media guru, which is fantastic for me. <laughs> um, and he's told me basically you've got to have three posts a day and you've got to have engagement to really bring your numbers up because Yayan is a professional photographer, which I'm going to utilise as best I can. <laughs> You don't know this yet, but I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he, he unfortunately, I and he said, oh, I like to do some of your social media stuff. Yes. <laughs> so unfortunately, he don't realise what's about to be dropped on him soon. <laughs> <laughs> Can so, I ask you to keep us up to date then with when the when the new page comes out? Um, I'm sure we will we'll all be. The, so the page is out already. I've only got like about 23 followers, but. <laughs> That's in terms dead. of like the insights, some of our pages already, because I I can see who's looking at things. I can see there's about 300 people looking at our posts every time, but they're not liking the page yet. And I think that's probably because it's 
in its infancy of only a couple of weeks. But yeah, I, I can show you on my phone now if you want. I'm, I'm sure having seen the, the the volume of projects that you've taken on, that everyone here will support you and try and get yeah. it exactly known as possible. He's pushing things, isn't he? That's all I've got to do is do a post of everything that I'm doing to put on there, which we used to do, and the public. So it's just a time thing. So poor Yayan is going to hate me soon. <laughs> But just to confirm as well, as Jill said, so we have got SPF funding uh, for an engagement officer, but we are having trouble recruiting at the yeah. moment. So we're about to go out back out uh, to recruitment again. But obviously, you know, if we were able to recruit to that post, then we would be able to push the message further as well. That's great. Positive. Um, Councillor Clay Jones, please. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> Two questions under Appendix 1, half it on the page, and I'll read it. Investment into no more May signs to be put around Borough. Can you explain exactly what that is? This is something that we are talking about as well. So that's a... Uh... I had to put that on there because it's been paid through grants. So, as you're well aware, we're trying to change a lot of the grass cutting within the borough. Um, there is there is a campaign, it's called No Mow May. So the whole of May, you don't cut the grass. Plant Life, I've done this, and many, many, many councils and the whole of Wales have been delivering No Mow May throughout May for years and years and years. Um, we've never done it. So I was approached to say, can we do no more mate? And I was like, yeah, of course. For me, it's easy. For other departments, it's not so easy because of the implications on SLAs, of public perception, um, sports pitches, people kind of doing things like that. So I've sent some of the literature around already. Um, we've had signs made up that says no more mate. They haven't been put in yet, so there is still we've still got to think about are we going to do the campaign or not? Um, and if we are going to do the campaign, how do we do it in a sympathetic way that we're not going to get public complaints um, and that we can still deliver services? So it's a tricky situation. Oh, I, I'm being very diplomatic right now. <laughs> I'm very diplomatic right now. It's <laughs> a message for the public as well, as well as council services. It's the people pray the gardens and yeah. I mean, okay, so you all know about like you know, pollinators at the moment they're in massive decline. So we we are struggling at the moment. So what we're trying to do is give them a bit of a helping hand. So the month of May basically is that beginning cycle of plants growing. Of species coming out, trying to find obviously their first kind of food and then obviously first eggs, etc. Now, if we're going in, cut it all, then we've just decimated a whole ecosystem in one go. Now, it is a really tricky one because you can cut meadows in April because and then leave it then for the whole of the year, and we won't cut it then until October time, roughly, isn't it? End of September, October time. You can cut one time, but what we're trying to do is give those pollinators, as well as kind of the flowers, the grasses, a chance right at the beginning of the year so they can thrive. But if we keep going, then obviously we're always back to the beginning, we're struggling. Now, again, it's easy for me, just don't cut. Just don't, just don't bloody cut it. But, you know, I will have everyone in this department going to me, but we've, we've got to cut that. So I'm in the tricky situation now of trying to work out, okay, what can we cut? What can't we cut? And then if we do it, I've got to think of a campaign to put that across to the public so they get behind it, either in their gardens or they accept, maybe in schools or maybe in their play areas, so we're only going to leave it for one month and then it'll get cut. Now, we're not talking grass that's going to grow, you know, as high as me. We're talking grass that's probably going to grow as much as my hand. But I've 
got to try and do some negotiations first in house. So I am at the moment currently speaking to lots of different councils um, and getting their perspectives and their information of how they delivered it. So I can then go back to people like Jude, people like Rob and say, right, ego, you make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, you know, Jill's absolutely right in what she says, and it's something we should be supporting because we had a number of calls last year from the public saying, are you doing it? Why aren't you yeah. doing it? But I think we've got to, you know, going back to engagement, we've got to get the comms absolutely right because the last thing we want to do is say, we're doing no more May, and then somebody sees us cutting a sports field yeah. or cutting a school, and, you know, we, we look stupid Angle, there, quite please. frankly, don't we? So it's all about getting that message right, basically, yeah. Can I can I ask you about roundabouts? Is fun. The... <laughs> planting of flowers because it's uh, for me and for hundreds of others um, it's nice to see not just a bland roundabout with just grass on it but a few flowers yeah. so it, is that down to you or others in the parks department so put some flowers on roundabouts i'd love to put flowers on roundabouts some of our roundabouts are in the sutra so obviously we've got no control over what the trunk, trunk road agency do. So I can't do them. But generally the trunk road agency are fantastic now. Um, Pentra Park roundabout is one of them. You'll see all the orchids come up. Right. Um, they won't cut that no more because their ecologist is telling them don't do that, which is great. Um, I think a lot more could be done on our roundabouts, 100%. Obviously, you've got to think of visibility displays. So you have to think of your planting, um, which is which is something that we, we do need to think about. But again, it comes down to funding. Who's paying for it? But don't companies are able to promote it, put their sites on? You could, yeah. But again, with the visibility displays, I know with the Trunk Road Agency, um, you know our pollinator sign that you see around the borough? It's like the yellow one. They'll be dotted around. Pentra Park Fields has got one. I think you've got some down in Bedlin, I'll give you. Yeah. So I asked Trunk Road to put that particular sign on part of their areas, and they're worried that if a, something like a motorcyclist comes off, chances are they could smack into that. Which I was like, mm, okay, what are the chances, you know? But that one slim chance we've still got to take on board. So it's Again, contentious, when you've got people who are advertising on a roundabout, that could still have the same impact, couldn't it? On a motorcyclist or a car, you know, coming out. In terms of small, low-growing flowers, it's not a problem. Um, you could ask them to fund it and say that that's them actually funding it and they're promoting it and then we could do a campaign. But again, that's not for me. No, but it's good on the eye. Uh, it's fantastic chair to come into because we get thousands of visitors in Merthyr Tidville more and more every day and for those coming here for the first time mm -hmm. to come into the, the county borough and to see a roundabout yeah. with nothing on it no cover is, is not something that yeah. we should be doing nowadays so an ambition of mine again is to be a B county I know other counties, I know Newport, they became a B county. There are actual forms that you fill in. But again, it would have to come to obviously cabinet. And every single one of you would have to obviously sign that and say, yes, we're doing it. And then if you come to me and you want that grass cut, I'm going to say, no, you can't because we're a B county. So <laughs> it's one of those things like, you know, if you want it, yes, we can have it all together. And we can make mass changes in the borough, but it takes all of you. But the B would mean is B W. <laughs> um, like we just on on the run, where we landed daps on the run, but at the end of the retail park, yeah, community yeah. group did that. Yeah, we did the daps going up to Girardi yeah. as well, going up to yeah. there. Yeah. And we just we just had a quiz in the Gary Club. Raise fifty quid and oh, right. the daps of trade go. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. And we just we just planted them uh, really? Saturday night. Uh, <laughs> I'm not sure what actually if they trigger they're probably not. But, but then, and most of them were rotten anyway, so we don't buy <laughs> for them. 
he said, "Me and Q's next time." But no, it was we we just yeah. got it. We, like yeah. you said, yeah. it's 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 a busy roundabout. Yeah, it is it's a main way into that Mayfair yeah. Park, and yeah. it's beginning to look nice actually. Yeah, yeah. excellent. A lot of stuff. The other point is, as we'd already touched upon this afternoon, is and this is completely totally out of control, and that's the scramblers and the quad bikes. Um, I give you an instance, and everybody here probably give an instance. In my ward, the bottom of Vulcan Hill, come to the junction, look straight across, there's a lovely grass area there. Was, is the operative word. And the local scramblers absolutely love coming down. Vulcan Hill, I came across um, nine of them one Sunday morning. I just turned the corner and they were one behind each other. I stopped the car and uh, wound the window down and said, what do you think you're doing? And it was just carried on and they went straight across Grass Verge onto the to the road. Um, I was out Saturday morning um, with a street surgery with Gerald George, the MP. A um, neighbour approached us about a different matter on the entrance to Quarry Row, and when we were there, a scrabbler and a quad bike began, it came straight across that. Now, I've approached the police more than once, and the answer is, we cannot go after them. And especially since the issue down in Ely, where they went after two youngsters, we all know what happened there. And I think there's even more reluctance from the police to do anything. But the the answer is from the South Wales Police Force, we cannot do anything. They know that, and that's why they seem to be riding over most open spaces, from what I see, throughout the county borough. I just think it's diabolical. And either through yourself or the chief officer or the cabinet member, this is a matter which should be raised at the highest level with the police, because if it's happening in Merthyr Tidville, it's happening elsewhere, and it cannot continue. So I don't know if you can be involved with that. And can, can I answer? Yeah. We have written to the Chief Inspector of Merthyr on more than one occasion, and as he told you, we can't chase them. However, they, they got a helicopter up regular, but they don't seem to want to find them, which is uh, yeah. a sad situation. Can, can I suggest, David, on this occasion, it needs to be raised at the chief constable's level, yeah, yeah. not just the local ins in inspector, yeah, yeah. because the instruction and the answer is coming down yeah, yeah. right at a very high level, and it can't go on. It, it is They are a danger. They're a danger to themselves. They're a danger to pedestrians, and I wouldn't mind finding out how many near misses or injuries have occurred to um, members of the public because they feel they could do absolutely anything at the moment. Well, I know I know that the commissioner has been spoken to as well, and right. and, and the he obviously speaks to the. Yeah, I, I honestly think that uh, this I, should be raised officially. Through sorry, the can I just sorry. say on, on, the, on the back of what Clive is saying, yeah. and, and it is, we know this, and we get told, obviously, it is a police issue if they're out there. Yeah. But when they're on council land and they're constantly ripping up the good work that the likes of Jill are doing, uh, that that funding is just being wasted. Well, we're even doing we like, like Inspector Clouse on me and yeah, like yeah. that because yeah we we try to find this out, find that out, where to feed this information back to the police. Yeah. You know, it it takes more than just it. It, it takes us all. It's, it's going to take us all. It's damaging they the environment. Care. There's no respect. And when you see an area where there might not be many bushes or flowers, and there's a deep furrow through it. It's so, unbelief. I'll just jump in quickly. Obviously, top of my head, yeah, I've had to deal with lots of this over the years. I've had to deal with lots of kind of bikes coming in, snapping trees, cutting fences, horse riders taking fences out that I've done. 
for many, many, many years. Um, my first initial thought is we probably need to know where in the borough they are. Like, you know, we need to probably map it all out to begin with, right? We know they're in that area, we know they're in that area. And then we need to look at those sites and actually work out why are they using those sites? Generally, you know, the sites that they use are sites that are not being used, you know, kind of recreationally wise by lots of people. So they're using it to get out of the way and enjoy because there's probably scree on there um, where they can do their big jumps. Always thought about the Forestry Commission, do you know what I mean? Like if they had an area dedicated to kind of that, they would probably all go to that particular area because it's renowned. Like Bike Park Wales, you need somewhere like that next to it for scramblers rather than just for like biking. Whether that's possible or not, I don't know. Um, but I think the first port call is looking at where they are in the borough through my money, and again, it is big, big money that I get every year. Like over the two years now, it's nearly a million pounds. That includes obviously revenue. Um, we can look at those sites and really transform them, totally transform them. You know, we can put pathways in, you can put your trees in, you can dig your ponds, because then it's actually looking like it's being cared for. We're adding to our kind of NRAP of increasing areas. Obviously, everything's got to be subtly done, so we'd have to look at things, but there's opportunities there. But I can't do any opportunities if I don't know what's going on in areas. So I think the first port of call, and again, I can't guarantee many to any of these sites, is mapping out where the scramblers are in the borough. I'd wait to you about this particular, because it's been ruined. Yeah. And I think uh, me and Declan will give you an update on what we know from our area as well. Because um, he's got a bit of information. I'm very, very busy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> lots of, lots of the off <laughs> <laughs> very, very busy. <laughs> lots of the off-roaders have come up through Gary, which, cool. which is yeah, a, a real problem on it on, on the weekends. But they they've almost created their own yeah. area. The top the, the top of the mountain is just decimated on the left hand side. It's like a, that's it's NLW like a, though. Absolutely, it is NLW. And then we go back into the old Cum Colliery site and the old Gethin Woodland Park site with the yeah. deck boards, etc. So they do meet there. They might, might have 40, 50 bikes there on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. He's a constant hammer of, of, of bikes. But but they as you said, they're out of the way. They're not conflicting with the with the cyclists or with anyone walking except for me. And um and and they, they they are creating their own areas. But to get there, they have to then go through town. They have to go through Car, They have to go up the banks, etc. And they have made a hell of a lot of damage to them. But what I've heard is a lot of it is put on social media. And a lot of the bikers and not actually from here, they come from east of England. Yeah, oh yeah. They're more like Bristol yeah. kind of area. Yeah. They're coming over um, because there's certain posts on Facebook they tell them to come over to your Gethin Woods. You've got, you, you got the old farmhouse in the middle yeah. of the woods. In, in Echev, that, that old farmhouse That's and right. that, that old track by which that farm used to link up with the town end. That's been decimated by bikers. The only thing that stops them using it is the fact that the trees have come down in storms and so it's stopped some of that. Speak to NLW mm. and kind of push that a bit more because obviously it's, you know, it's NLW forestry land, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but it's, they're using the old Gethin Woodland Park trails. Yeah. yeah. Which obviously the public can't use no more. Not anymore, no. No. I was, again, and it's on the same subject, I was with Clyde on Saturday and one of the residents said that he has got video, he actually showed us video evidence yeah. of yeah. many of the vehicles, so I can understand why they, they don't chase the vehicles any longer, but many of these had registration numbers. Yeah. If, they, if they're out of date, you know, they just expired, then fair enough. But I would imagine that some of them are still um, yeah. in use, for want of a better term. And the other thing that was suggested when we were having a bit of a wander around later was the use of drones, which, you know, you're not directly following people. I know it's... Um, it's an expensive hobby. But they might have a no-fly zone though there. Mm. Yeah, uh, yeah. Know, just uh, just another suggestion. Sorry to have interrupted you, Clive. No, no, no. no, 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 no. Just want to carry on. Yeah, it's added to it, yeah. 
it might be worth getting a task group together though kind of get lots of people involved i mean i always find like you know with task groups you can start bringing in different ideas of yeah. who's got knowledge who can help but things. but until the all authorities public bodies because they that are the enforcement body these scramblers and quad bikes should not be on the road because they're not licensed to be on the road so it's not anybody else's responsibility it's the south wales police and in the follows d there are going to be injuries and deaths because they shouldn't be there I agree Finished. I finished on it, yeah. Uh, Councillor Colburn, please. Thank you, Chair. Sorry to take you back to grass cutting, Jill. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you're right in what you say. We, we can't win whatever we do because half the residents want the grass cut to within an inch or a fraction of its life and, the, and half of them want it to grow. So we're, we're never going to win. But also going back to what you've said about um, the pollinator signs, which are all around the borough in the different areas that that you have left. I just wondered, had there been any follow up, any research to see how much impact they've had? Uh, has that increased the amount of pollinators? Yeah, they didn't you? Um... Yeah, well, uh, I I looked at each of those the, the initial sites um, and just uh, did a survey of what plant species are, uh, were there at the start. And I've looked at it a couple of years after that as well with a new cutting regime. And um, yeah, there were, yeah, there were, there's been an increase in, uh, in in plant species. And then obviously not the knock on effect for that is there'll be an increase in uh, invertebrate species as well. And then bird species and bat species. So yeah, it, it does work. I mean, you know, it's, it's uh, intuitive in a way, isn't it? If you stop cutting it, you get more flowers coming through, then you're going to get more insects visiting the, the different different types of flowers and grasses. And yes, it's obviously going to increase and improve biodiversity. Yeah, so if we've got evidence to back this up, it would be nice if we could make that available. Yeah, so when course. people can't yeah. complain to us and say, well, why haven't you cut We say, here's the evidence. This is yeah. why we haven't cut it. Here's, here's the evidence. Yeah, we've got some, there's a few statistics yeah. we, could, we could use in that context. Yeah, definitely. So this year, I am going with me. So on the back of what Matt has recorded, um, I, don't, I think you all had my booklet last year, didn't you, about why we're not cutting grass. So this year I've done more. I, I'm like, even though he says publication stuff, it's not. So I've done an educational one aimed at children. And then I've done one aimed at what you're talking about right now. Um, so our own grass cutters can go out and actually look what's on site and it's like a tick box exercise so that you can look at like your abundance frequency you know if there's rare there we can tick them so i've done the top 20 of what matt has already recorded and i've looked at the whole site of all of them and just pull them together and again there's there's room for obviously this to grow and then i've also because i'm me done it i kind of pull out page so that the public, if they want to, or a community group, want to kind of do some survey work for us as well, they've got pictures of what every single one is, so they can go, what's a bird foot trefoil? There's a lovely picture and there's a description, and then they can tick, that's in their area. So it's moving along progressively, so it might be nice now, like in the next financial year, as in April, to kind of promote this as well. I'll have kind of downloadable material at some point. I'm waiting for the Welsh to come back at the moment. Um, but that can add to obviously Matt's kind of survey stuff that he's already done. Um, and then I'm hoping, you know, maybe in the future we can actually do some survey work with groups like a scientific kind of elements where you use your quadrants, where we can show kind of that's there and maybe cut a piece of grass like we we're talking about no mo may to actually show the difference of like that's what you've got if you don't do that so yes that'd be fantastic um 
Perhaps have you given any thought about doing um, some like little booklets for school children so they can go around and, and they can tick off what they've seen? And... Haven't done well, what they can see, what they tick off. But what I've done is a, a bit of a did you know kind of help, giving nature a helping hand, basically, it's called. And it's got every habitat we've talked about from woodlands to verges to gardens parks what would you see so species in there and giving them a, a bit of a did you know so about like otters wordy gigs in a pond so they can go back to the you know their mums or dads or grandparents and say yeah did you know I we used to do this all the time to me did you know it's great and then on the back it's got what are those habitats so what I'm trying to do is get them to look at different species and go that's associated you know in a really simplistic way with these habitats mm -hmm. it's got actions how can you help so for me at the moment it's kind of i'm becoming a book author too <laughs> honestly <laughs> I, i'm gonna write all this on my cv <laughs> so it's trying to develop materials so they're easy for people to use um of course they can use those pull out ones because they they're really lovely of user a illustrator who's done some amazing work um and it, it it's i don't want to say it's idiot proof but it is idiot proof you know anyone could go out there and look at that drawing of that plant or that particular species and get it so it's just tick 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 whether you're five years old or whether you're 80 years old, you know, it's it's quite simplistic. It's lovely. I can't wait for you to see it. Fantastic. And I know, and just we've only got to look at your reports here, you quite a bit busy you are with just yourself. But have you ever thought about going into schools and speaking to some of the primary school children? No. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I used to. I used to do it all the time. Um, I still get a lot of schools that email me and ask for support and help and can you come in, can you do this, can you do that and I always try and help and support them where I can, um, I think it's really important, I know Yayan recently he's just been out with Avon Taff planting hedgerows, I know tomorrow he's taking a group of 10 kids out to do bird feeders so we're trying slowly to get back in that, obviously Covid stopped everything and because of funding, it's really tricky and it, it is really tricky and I wish I could help a lot more. But obviously with grant funding, and I've had this problem with Abercanard School as a prime example. So we had no green walls in the borough. So we looked last year, wasn't it? Obviously the year before we looked at all the all the black roofs in Merthyr. And we wanted to do more green roofs. And Speaking to obviously property services, estates, it, you would think it'd be easy, but it wasn't, was it? It was pretty much no, 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 because of weight, maintenance, water, etc. So Abercanard School had a flat side apex of their school. Abercanard School didn't have one bit of grass in their school, surrounded by grass, but in the actual school, not one plant, vegetable, tree, nothing absolutely nothing so for a 21st century school and again my grant doesn't allow me to really to work with schools so I put a very good case together and we were able to spend £80,000 on a green wall now looked amazing absolutely fantastic kids loved it the school decided to turn off the irrigation system over the whole of summer and all my plants have died oh, God. so thankfully the people, and again, there's no maintenance in my grants. Thankfully, I was very savvy and worthy to get without the grants people knowing, and this is not being recorded, is it? Another year's maintenance. Yes. No, no, sorry. <laughs> Another year's maintenance. And then because the irrigation system wasn't working properly, they've agreed to give me another year's maintenance. So it's working. So now they've had a whole load of new plants put in, and you know, they've got a beautiful green wall again. But there's been a lot of lessons to be learned um, with things like schools, because obviously they're not there. You can't just rely on a caretaker to turn the water on. So error on my behalf, 
error on you know the school's behalf error on the the company itself so i'd love to help schools a lot more than what i can but i am kind of conflicted with grant money because if one head wants it and then they leave and then another head comes in and says i don't want it the grant funding has got to be there for years and years and years so it's a little bit contentious there right thanks joe Uh, Councillor Smith, please. Can I go back on the comment uh, the Cameron member made? You wrote a letter to Alan again about. I will ask. You to meet in that. Ah, that's Wednesday. Can we invite them to um, one of these meetings, scrutiny meetings? I'd be happy to. All right, because at the end of the day, it's, it's going to out of control. Enough is enough now, especially with me. And then they're coming from Gallagher, like girl that's all over the shop. And they're not doing 30, 40. They're speeding. So, can we invite them? Yeah. Have a go with them? Yeah, yeah. Right. What do you really want? Can I go to the second of my Oh, I see. <laughs> Going in. I don't know. There's an election then. Oh, fair enough. Who are we then? No, but they send where was there, man. Enough is enough. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, Philip Starr, please. It's a bit more work for yourself here, though, but in 6.1, mm -hmm. you mentioned uh, the possibility of site visits yeah. to see some of the projects and the achievements that are, you know, that have been done and are ongoing. So any plans for that? You're welcome to come out whenever you want. Whenever you want. I will take you to any site that you want to, you know, see that I've developed. Um, again, just remember seasonally, if you want to see Trelewis wetlands, again, we're putting new things in there soon, so that's really exciting, putting some sculptures in there soon. Um, that's fantastic at the moment. Again, I've left that for five years, and the other day I was down there and there was diving beetles, there was back swimmers, there was frogs, frog spawn. It's starting to thrive in that area now. Um, I think seasonally because come summer Straight, yeah. because of that particular what that particular area is it's a wetland come summer the water won't be there so it's ephemeral so it'll yeah. come and go if you want to see Trogaroo Park where we turn the tennis court into a beautiful garden I personally recommend coming end of spring summertime when it's really in fruition because it's beautiful um if you want to see all the kind of sculptures and abacanid we put in again I guess it depends what you're looking for because Abercana is like nature walk, huge salmon there, there's an otter there, there's a waterfall there, a dragonfly we put in. And again, that's about kind of getting people closer to nature. Mm -hmm. You'd walk past the school with the green wall in. Um, and then you could walk over my lovely bridge that we put in so the, the school children could do pond dipping. There's a new orchard there, etc. But so I guess it depends what you want to see. Um, because whether it's species or whether it's habitats, then you know I can I can give you any site you want to. And you can always drop me a message, or we can do it as a group. It just depends on how you want to do it. Yes, right. Then we we can perhaps do that through the chair and through Neil's uh, Neil's replacement. Then presumably, yeah. Thanks, Jill. So so that, that the offer is there for. Offer is there. I'm very busy though. I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps you'll have a new officer to take us around. Perhaps yeah, Yang can do it as well as doing his social media. Yeah. 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 <laughs> do we have any further questions for Jill or Matt? Oh, thanks. I'm tired, but you know. I'm, at least I'm passionate. Eh? I'm breathing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm breathing. <laughs> do we have any comments then? I have a comment. Uh, I just want to say well done to you because pretty amazing. This uh, page you got, is it able to be shared to different pages? Because we got quite a few groups going. So if I share it to them, hopefully you'll have a bit of response. But uh, well done anyway. Thank you. Any further comments? Yep, I think uh, we're very privileged to have Jill in our team and uh, the work she does is appreciated and Matt as well. 
is appreciated. So I'd like to thank you as a portfolio member in here. Thank you. I'd like to add my appreciation to that. If, if sorry, if there are no other comments, I'd like to add my appreciation. Oh, Malcolm, sorry. <laughs> yeah, well, I think we're all singing from the same hymn sheet, aren't we? So, so Jill, amazing. Just keep on what you're doing, what you're doing. But can you do a bit more? <laughs> <laughs> because it's it's so obvious the difference that you've made on your own around the borough. We we see all the different projects that you've done. So just just carry on, Jill. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. But Imagine do a if bit I was a team. <laughs> Imagine if there was yeah. a budget to have core people. That's what I say. <laughs> <laughs> so finally, I will I will get to add my comments. Um, thank you, Jill and Matt, for a very informative report. Um, I certainly believe that. From Appendix One, your work isn't being publicised enough, and many of us, other than possibly our own wards, are aware of the the volume of work that you're getting through. So all I can say is thank you very much and keep up the good work. Thank you, Jeff. And on that note, if you wish, you may leave and thank you very much, both. And David, sorry. One thing's for sure, she certainly knows her stuff. Um, move on then to item four, the Scrutiny Forward Work Programme 2324, which we're now coming to the end of. Um, do we have any questions or comments about it straight off? Councillor Clive Jones. Yes, yes. What what the, is the up to date situation with the nappy absorbent and hygiene products? I know we were uh, it's a recurring theme here in this suit committee, but exactly where are we uh, at now? We we are still looking to go down to Kamar then. There's a recycling centre down there that would be nice to go and see. I, I think it would be nice to go and see. Um, to see what they do and get further information on what they actually do with the materials, costs and uh, recycling, whatever, whatever benefits there are from it. Um, though Welsh Government have still not come back with anything with regard to a central recycling centre and that was the last that i was aware they were they were looking to do somewhere in the southeast wales area so the only real development is that is to go down to cardigan where's cardigan how do you come out then come out then it was one of them to want to visit the site and then we can get we can get further information from the horse's mouth so to speak We've had an answer back from the Welsh Government that they were possibly looking at a, a, a centre, South Wales, somewhere. Um, it has probably gone on the back burner because of the uh, extreme financial situation at the Welsh Government level. But uh, I think we should keep on to them about it because I mean, in this day and age, you can't go on, but in uh, nappies and uh, everything else, I, other hygiene products in the black bin, because that's what's happening. Um, and if we are, uh, you know, going to get into the 21st or 22nd century, we've got to stop this happening. Um, and I agree with you, it may well be interesting 
finding a, the right date when most of us can go there might be the real issue. But um, I'd like to certainly like to go down to Kamar then to see how it works. We'll certainly put uh, put dates out, potential dates out. OK, um, and then ob we obviously we'll choose the one that the most members can can attend. Yeah, OK, that's fine, Chair, thanks. Unfortunately, you might have me driving the minibus. Well, I'm <laughs> sure that'll be a <laughs> interesting experience, Chair. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and only a five and a ticket. <laughs> um, any other questions, comments? This was the only one I've got to point out is that uh, the flood risk management was uh, was supposed to come this month, but because of various issues that will now be coming to us next month. And I'm looking forward to that to see the flood risk that's potentially flood area, the, the area that's potentially involved as a flood risk. Because I believe it's from the old Morless Brook going across down into where Tesco's used to be and the land down there, which stops us developing that area. Sorry? Be within that uh, that risky area? This building yeah. and, and, and the court building? It's... Since since the, this building's been put up, mm -hmm. I don't think you'd get permission for it today. No. Without no. the... Um, <laughs> If the bus station is an area of concern, then obviously if this is between a brook and a bus station. Yeah. It would have to be a hell of a problem and we'd have a monsoon once in a million years to flood the bus station, in my opinion, because the river is right down there. It would perhaps come from the brook as, it, as opposed well, to... Well, it's a pregnancy claim, you know, simple enough. Uh, anyway, we will have the experts to inform us and we will be able to inter question them. Yeah, yeah. So I, I'm quite looking forward to that one. Um, so any other queries around the Forward Work programme? Nope. Uh, scrutiny referrals, I haven't had any. Yeah. You acted travel in uh, running the average of and ready car roundabout. Can we invite them in for a meeting to find out what they do doing down there? Because I know it's out for consultation and I'm fed up of people having to go with me because at certain times of the day it takes an half hour to get down that section. And I think it's enough is enough over the period of years. People have had enough of it. They have anyway. I won't come. In. Because he's not he's knocking the town, the traffic are coming in. We we'll have a look at it. We we at the moment we we'll have the opinion it's under regen. I can't go to monkeys who's it under as long as they get it. Yeah, simple as that. And if it's enough, well, no, it, it can't come here. Come it'll go to regen. We can we can refer it. Right, well, we'll have a joint meeting. We can look at a joint meeting though that has been. Um, hasn't happened in the past when we've asked, asked about, we have asked yet. We can't ask. Um, the, the only other alternative is to let it go through regen, um, but speak to our colleagues who sit on that scrutiny with the questions that we have. Well, something going to be done because the, the public that we have had enough from, I mean, I do talk to people on the Certain parts of the time of the day they won't come here. Well, actually, when I when I asked about alternative crossing, um, somewhere in that area, I think it was the cabinet member at the time. I was told no that it was too close to the roundabout. When you know logic would tell you to accept that, but it's happened, and I don't know why. Can you consider it about two crossings for a hundred yards each other? Three. Just three, three ways to get row. Yeah, row. You know, the bridge yeah. in, in oh. out in, uh, one just on the corner. And yeah. they wanted to put a light, a light on the row and, uh, on the bridge one. So there were three yeah. lights. Yeah. Come on. No, forget it. And they were told not to do it by a way, uh, we will, recommend it. We will get the answer for you. Um, 
if we can, we'll, we'll, we'll do, we'll ask for a joint scrutiny. Um, and if not, we'll let you know, and you'll have to go through colleagues in region. And, and then lay a bit, a bit of pressure on, that's all we want, then, or something then. Yeah. Um, item six, report recommendations. Did we address the recommendation in the report? And do we think we've added value? I think it was a very, um, there were an awful lot of questions around many subjects. And to be fair to Jill, she was very conversant with every aspect of it. Yeah. And yeah, not just what we asked, she actually expanded on many of the, of the questions that we asked. And as far as I'm concerned, it was a, a very good scrutiny meeting. We've got to point out shorter staff. That's not good because of the stress. And also the, the funding. Yeah, because yeah. it's all right saying you want this. Without the staff and the funding, she can't, she won't be able to carry on. So and that girl have a nervous breakdown when she's going. Yeah, so it's not good to have all that on one person. So um, I think you know, we've got to recommend something to the cabinet member. I would, we all know about finance. I always done, I don't know. Can we help her out? Because she's struggling. Well, we asked the cabinet member directly about funding yeah. for. I said, I about this. You want to suffer. You know, you don't want it easy. You work, you don't this. You go as a permanent at 12 per long. Do we want to pick a time in the future? I don't know, three months, six months, whenever. She said her particular funding is in place until 2025. Mm -hmm. Do we want to pick a point in the future where we'll ask the cabinet member if there's been any developments with the funding for it? That's your grant. That, that's your grant. Money yeah. Though, to yeah, it's your grant money. Yeah, no, there's no co budget. No, there, is it? no, no, no there's no co funding at all. No co funding. You can't do anything. No, you can't promise anything. You can't. No, or you'll be laying down. You just crossing your fingers. The grant comes to one. She's very so, clever. So do we want to put in the forms for grants? Do we want to? Ask the cabinet member if there's any development with regard to co funding being allocated to in Jill or for Jill's team. Um, Phil asked her about us going out maybe as a group to different sites, have a look, she's been doing, and then go to the, the cabinet member and yeah. say, We've seen what this girl is doing yeah. on her own and what yeah. she could achieve. If she had the right back head, I mean, she's doing a lot now. She? So if if we were to set Maybe. that for how long? Three months? Well, I see, I've seen that was in on by Prince John. Mm -hmm. The work they done on that, but again, it's heartbreaking, it, though, Bill. It's, it's a, I would say end of April. That's a France years, April first. Give them four weeks. See what anything's come up then. Yeah. Well, the, right, branch, the, the site visit has, has to have an outcome. Yeah. And, Presumably, the outcome is our support. That's what I mean. Yeah, if if Go we are going to agreed. support her with a site visit, yeah, and 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 promote the work she's doing. That's what I'm saying. Then that goes in her favour, doesn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And secondly, I know it is an enforcement issue mainly. However, I do believe the council has a responsibility to these grant to these areas where the quads are, where the bikes are, because these are supposed to be open spaces for families, for everybody to enjoy. That's not happening. And as you said, I think we need to have that meeting with the police or whoever's going to come in and talk to us. Well, yes. Whoever's brave enough to come in and talk to us. Mm -hmm. And obviously, isn't there anything that we can put in place to prevent them going on these grounds? Because whatever Jill is doing, Reckon. It's getting wrecked. It's yeah. getting destroyed. And this pendant she's fighting so hard for, you can imagine, can you, when you see it all turfed up because they're they they shooting up the middle of Dowlas on that new area she done from grey to green. And it's on footage. It? Taking a car, a quad straight up the middle, all over the mm. plants, all over the grass. It's it's a render. Shocking. So Yes, Chair. To answer your question, Chair, one, we've got an obligation because of the legislation that's mm -hmm. there, uh, several acts of parliament. Uh, she's very clever in, uh, she, she told us 
it takes time uh, to fill out these grant forms. You've got to have the ability and experience um, to fill these forms in. So she's very good at that. But that can't remain forever and a day. Um, so if we're able to visit the various places, so we, we can see, build up the case, and I would say that we need to put it on the agenda for, um, we've got a meeting in September. Yeah, there will be a meeting in September. That's, we, that's the aim there, August, to we... get it back on the agenda. Circa so September time, is, yeah. that, is that the suggestion? Well, in the, in the meantime, we have... you'd have visited these various places. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then... Unfortunately, because of the weather, etc., we haven't organised. We wanted to get one spring meeting. Mm. One early spring meeting and then one sort of late summer meeting or mid mid to late summer meeting. So we could see these um, different sites. So we'll get the first one organised as soon as possible. And the other one then. July, September. And then ask about it after when, as Councillor Leighton has suggested. When's the frog spawn coming out, Malcolm? When is it? So now. Oh, now. Now is it? Yeah. Okay. We're and about that... three weeks behind in bed and all because we're a <laughs> bit colder up there, but the places. Uh... And last, lasting until the end of this month, or when, when the tadpoles come? Well, yeah, well, not for my. Oh, Rachel. Well, not for my. The window there. Right? You're not going to pond, will you? So would would you prefer to try and get something done quickly to go around? Some of the is, is, it, is it best time to look at the area now? It's pointless looking at the area now because nothing's going to grow in until it grows and it comes nice and fresh. It's a time to look at it. You could see the wet ones now. They, they, yeah. they, they probably bloom in now. Aren't they? Mm. Wet, yeah, but yeah. like Joe said, it's an ephemeral area. Yeah, so through. it's just like a mud flat. Yeah. Um, Some. Which yeah. is quite difficult to explain to residents because yeah. they're all was a work there, there's no water. <laughs> but it's done its job during the winter, it's, yeah. it's drained all the water. The whole area used to be used to be a completely unusable bog, but now it's a really nice area. And it's dried nice and dry in the summer, but it is a pond in the winter. So. And I think that's a good point because we all are, haven't seen all these different areas. We know of our own areas, yeah. We know what's going on there. In the next We're not really out there seeing the bigger picture. We, yeah. And that's what sweetening is all about, yes. isn't it? Mm -hmm. It's the overall. So we leave it with sort of later in this in the springtime, yeah. and then one in the summer. If we're yeah. in agreement with that, yeah. 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 Um, is there anything else around that? Then. Item seven, feedback on scrutiny activities, outstanding actions. We've just gone through most of that um, with the EHPs and visits. Item eight, feedback on the site visit to unit 20. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. It's just too close of a meeting. I couldn't publish it in the last scrutiny. That was a good meeting, I was, wasn't it? Yeah. Good visit. Yeah. Very good visit. Yeah. And the money, the way we did it. Um, should we move on to, I was just told in the loop around that item. Item nine is any other business deemed urgent by the chair? The only thing that I've that I have to say is I'd like to thank Neil for his support and expertise over the past two years. Unfortunately, he is leaving for somewhere else. I'm sure that I speak on behalf of the whole committee when I say he will be sorely missed and also wish him all the best in his new role. Thank you, Bob. Appreciate that. Thank you. I do. I do find out too. Sorry, that was quite sharp, but uh, you've been really supportive of me as well. So. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. No problem. On behalf of, of everyone here. Yeah, thank you very much. Thank you. And on that note, I close the meeting. Thank you everyone for your attendance and input. It's been appreciated.